Welcome to Part 2 of Infection Control Basics for Healthcare Laundry Services. Here, we will go over the five essential steps to properly launder your healthcare items. Laundry personnel working in the sorting and washing area of the department should be appropriately trained in healthcare infection control basics and be able to demonstrate competencies on infection control principles safely to their supervisors. Standard precautions should be followed, including proper hand hygiene and use of PPE. Laundry staff should be frequently supervised to ensure compliance with standard precaution requirements. Laundry cleaning process step number one, sorting. The bags of contaminated linen are delivered to the soil sort area. This is where the bag textiles are emptied out for sorting and classified by type of contamination to maximize the effectiveness of the laundry process. This designated dirty area must be physically separated from other clean areas of the laundry facility. Offices, break areas, and the clean laundry processing areas should not be located within the dirty area. For infection control purposes, this dirty area should be well-maintained, organized, and should have surfaces that are easily cleanable by using an EPA-registered hospital disinfectant. During the sorting process, the worker should be on alert for unexpected items that may be contained in the soiled linen, such as used needles and other contaminated sharps, medical devices, patient's dentures, eyeglasses, and hearing aids. Infections resulting from failure to use appropriate barriers precautions hand washing and other infection prevention practices may occur unless standard precautions is strictly adhered to in this high-risk area. Individuals working in these areas should never eat, drink, or perform other activities that could introduce pathogens from the environment into their mouth, eyes, or mucous membranes. Carts, containers, covers, and liners used to collect or transport soiled textiles must be properly cleaned and disinfected after the cart is emptied and before the next use, whether to transport clean textiles or sorted textiles. Pre-sorting benefits Pre-sorting linen prior to washing is usually preferred for work efficiency and for cleaning when compared to the benefits of post-sorting after the washing process. The pre-sorting process should be performed by staff working in the soil sort area. First, staff should perform hand hygiene and apply PPE gloves, gown, and face protection if splashing is anticipated. Staff should sort items by the soil content, heavily soiled from lightly soiled. Staff should also sort by fabric and fiber type, by the weave of the material, and by the color. White items are washed separately from colored items due to color bleeding and staining. Additional laundering sorting tips. Wash loosely woven fabrics, such as curtains and blankets, at a high water level setting, with high sudsing to protect the fabric. Sort linens according to the type of processing equipment being used to wash them. For instance, wash towels separately from other no-iron items, which require much shorter extract and drying cycles. Pre-sort linen which will go directly into dryers from that which will go to flatwork ironers. Separate uniforms that will go to presses or steam tunnels. Process items that tangle easily by placing them into nylon nets to prevent tangling. Now, let's look at the washing process. There are a variety of shapes, sizes, and degrees of automated washers available for institutional laundries. Three basic types of washing equipment are used in processing healthcare items. Washers, washer extractors, and continuous batch washers. For our training purposes today, we will look at the general washing principles that you can apply to your facility's equipment. Always be sure to follow the manufacturer's directions for equipment that you are using and ask your supervisor for assistance if you have any questions. Also, always follow the manufacturer's directions for use for cleaning and disinfection chemicals. This includes chemical safety precautions, storage, and dilution processes. To restore soiled items to usable condition, we wash, bleach, rinse, and remove water. There are six key components that must be performed properly in order to have the expected outcome of a finished product that is safe and visually appealing for use. 
if any of these components fail to occur properly, it will have an effect on the quality of the laundry process. These six components include mechanical action in the equipment, dilution and size of the load, water flow, water temperature, time, and chemicals used. Six-step wash process The first step in the wash process is the flush, in which the items are flushed with a high water level at medium temperature for 1-3 to three minutes. The second wash step is the suds. The detergent acts as a surfactant, loosening and lifting the soil and enhancing the water's ability to penetrate the material in the item. Add detergent with a low water level, with hot water of at least 140 degrees to 160 degrees for 5 to 8 minutes. The third wash step is the bleach. Bleach disinfects the items and eliminates stains not already removed by the detergent. Add bleach with a low level of water at hot water temperature for 5 to 8 minutes. The fourth step is the rinse. Rinsing rids the items of detergent and soil in 2 to 4 rinse steps with high water levels at water temperatures dropping with each rinse, lasting 1 to 3 minutes each. The fifth step is the soft and sour. Fabric softener and sour brings the pH down to a safe level for the fabrics with low water level at medium temperature for 3 to 5 minutes. The sixth step is the extraction. Extraction removes 50% of the moisture in the linen, which takes 1 to 12 minutes, depending on the equipment and fabric characteristics. For example, 100 pounds of dry linen will contain 50 pounds of moisture after the extract step is completed properly. Damp items should not be left in machines overnight. Once extraction is complete, the wet laundry is ready for the next step in the laundering process. The next step is drying. Dryers vary in size and can be heated by gas, steam, or electric. Large dryers are often referred to as tumblers. The drying process for linen may be done either during tumble work, press work, or flat work processing. Tumble work includes using the dryers for drying towels, washcloths, and diapers. The press work includes uniforms. Flat work refers to sheets, pillowcases, napkins, and other similar laundry pieces. Always follow the manufacturer's directions for operating and maintaining the dryers. These maintenance tasks are important. Clean lint traps every day, as this will improve drying efficiency. Clogged lint traps will result in longer and inefficient drying. For press work and flat work, the finished dried and pressed product is discharged at the outlet area of the ironers. This is often the point where final sorting of items occurs, and rejected pieces are removed and placed in the designated area or container. This sorting process is an essential part of the Quality Assurance Program for laundry management to ensure that the quality is maintained in patient care areas, as well as to track laundry-related costs. The next step is folding. Folding may be done by hand or by automatic equipment. Folded laundry should only be transported through designated clean areas of the facility. The last step is storage. It is very important to use proper practices when storing and transporting clean items for infection control reasons. Clean items must be handled and stored in a hygienically clean manner. Healthcare stock items should be rotated as we do with other inventories in healthcare. First in, first out. Unwrapped items Store unwrapped clean items in designated clean storage rooms, areas, or carts labeled as clean linen storage. Cover unwrapped items that are placed into carts or hampers and keep the container covered at all times until it is delivered to the customer's linen storage room or other designated location in the healthcare facility. Clean storage rooms regularly with a detergent and water, including floor and shelves. If this storage area requires disinfection after cleaning, use an EPA-registered hospital-grade disinfectant. Close the door to the clean storage room at all times, except for entrance or exit. Only allow authorized personnel in this area. Bundled and wrapped textiles Store wrapped items in open racks in the laundry, on the trucks, or at the customer's facility 
provided the integrity of bundled and wrapped textiles is not compromised. If the transportation cart does not have a solid bottom, line the bottom with a hygienically clean barrier that prevents environmental contamination before placing clean items inside. Transporting clean items Maintaining the integrity of clean items relies on distribution and storage practices. There must be functional separation of clean items from soiled items in carts and vehicles at all times during handling, collection, and transportation of soiled linen. Make sure that the container used to transport the freshly laundered items is clean. If contaminated items were transported in it prior, it must be appropriately cleaned and disinfected before using it for clean item transport. Cover the container once it is filled. Plastic or other comparable wrap may be used if needed. Keep the container covered if it is to be used to store clean linen in patient care areas so as not to expose the items to common traffic or contamination. In the past few years, there have been reports of several serious infection control outbreaks associated with healthcare laundry processing. All laundry processing service workers must understand the essential role they fill in providing safe care to patients in healthcare settings. Thank you for what you do every day to provide safe care to patients and residents who are in healthcare facilities. By following these basic infection control practices we have discussed today, you will be able to perform your work safely for yourself, your co-workers, and the patients that we care for.